never, ever follow Rory in any presentation whatsoever. <laughs> I spent five years of my life and I've forgotten for tonight. Um, I've got some pictures here. Uh, secondly, greetings from the uh, New York Chapel. I was uh, in New York last week with the lovely people at Planningness. I understand Mr. Boyd from DDB is going to, going to um, be running one of those things next year, so watch out for that. Um, look, I wanted to start um, by being really... Okay, let's see if we can get this terrible PC working. There we are. I've got a couple of pictures just to uh, make the conversation rather more entertaining. Um, just start by being clear. I'm going to advise you that the way to understand human behavior better is to see us as a social creature. First, foremost, last. Not a social creature now and then, hang out occasionally with other people, but a fundamentally social creature. And to do that, um, I'm going to invoke Jesus, the big man in the sky. Now, I don't know if you, any of you uh, are fans of Midwestern church news, but uh, this happened. Uh, this is uh, Touchdown Jesus in Monroe, Ohio. Um, and it's, you can see how big it is if you look at the picture on the right, because that on the right is what happened on June the 15th this year, when Touchdown Jesus, this huge statue of Jesus who's just scored the final touchdown in the Super Bowl to win it for Cincinnati Bengals or whatever they are, um, got struck by lightning. And here's what happened. And there's just the Twitter feed. There are lots of feeds that are looked at to understand this. And you'll see that there are two spikes here. The first spike is when the news came out, and it came through both online and offline news sources, and people made a response to that. So that's, and that curve, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, matches exactly what we expect to see from independent choice and the characteristics statistically of that. Look at the area under that curve. It looks like a nice big peak, but look at the curve on the right, which has all the characteristics statistically of things spreading through social diffusion. That's where the money is. That's how things spread through populations. If you want things to spread through populations, don't get people to make independent decisions. Don't imagine they're going to be making independent decisions. You'll be there forever. Embedded, as Rory was saying, in much of our practice is the, uh, some really silly assumptions, like the fact that people choose things independently of each other based on the superior quality of the products. They don't. Most of the transmission of stuff through populations, ideas, behaviors, Cultural practices is through the social means, that peak on the right. So that's the Jesus argument of touchdown Jesus in particular. Uh, and I think we should spend more time on the right in our thinking and less on the left. Okay, second thing then. The big question is who we really are. Now, Susan Sontag once said that science fiction isn't really about science at all. And Arthur C. Clarke went further and said that science fiction isn't really about out there, isn't about the future, isn't about space but it's really about ourselves and our ideas about ourselves. And um, Star Trek is a great example of this. At the heart of virtually every Star Trek episode, there's something about the other out there, but there's a struggle between these two characters, between the logical Spock and the emotional and inadequate and slightly disappointing emotional agent, uh, uh, economic agent, uh, Kirk. For me, it kind of captures this particular split, which is the argument that behavioral economics are having with the more traditional kinds. And the real benefit of this, and, and, and there is a benefit to all of us, the stuff that Rory and, and Nick as well have been championing, is that the human beings aren't little calculating machines yeah. who work out utilities independently of other people. It's nonsense. It always has been. Psychology has been around for a long time. Some of the neuroscience has helped to support that. But it's nonsense but it's only a small part of the story. And the big picture, so it presents a picture like this, you know, human beings acting independently, thinking nonsense, right? This is who we really are. We are really a social creature. If you look at the broad spread of, spread of the human sciences from primatology through to um, uh, anthropology, um, a whole bunch of, whole bunch of uh, different disciplines point to the same truth, that we're fundamentally a social creature. We're adapted for a world of other people. Nobel laureate um, Thomas Schelling said memorably that most human life consists of individuals responding to a context of other individuals, responses to the context of the individuals who were there in the first place. Freud said you can never escape the other. <coughs> Our lives are lived out with each other. John Cassiopa, a social neuroscientist, please God, can we have more of those, um, said in his great book last year, Loneliness, um, he traces how damaging physically loneliness is to each of us individually. And he says, imagine a zoo, a Martian zookeeper comes down and tries to create the perfect environment for each of the species on this earth. Emperor penguins, 
you wouldn't put in a desert with a hot lamp, with <laughs> cactuses and vegetation only. You put them in a cold, wet place with lots of fish and lots of other penguins. They like that. That's what they're adapted for. Human beings, we're much more flexible as to the climate for a number of reasons. But the most important thing you have to consider when you build a, an environment that's suitable for human beings is an environment with other people. Mm. That is who we really are. And if that's the case, then it starts to become easier to describe human behavior in this sense. <coughs> to stop seeing it, the human behavior granulate at the level of the individual. Interesting, useful, absolutely. And particularly these enhancements that Rory and co have been suggesting. But we start to see people um, as fundamentally social creatures. I just want to show you something. Has anyone read the book Connected by Nick Christakis and James Fowler? You must. It's a brilliant piece of work. This is a, a um, diagram. It's a social network, <coughs> literary community in Framingham, Massachusetts. 32 years of independent uh, individual files, health indicators like obesity in this case, plus the social connections. They're able to reconstruct the whole social network of this town and see how the yellow dots, they're obese people, build over time, and then to do, also do the analysis to show how important social influence is in shaping something like obesity. So I'm just going to see if this runs now. It was playing up before, but we'll see. Ooh, that looks like it. <coughs> no. Doesn't want to do that, does it? Anyway, 57% more likely it's not animated, so if you look at that screen, it's not going to show you anything. 57% um, more likely to see, to uh, become obese if one of your close friends is becoming obese. Really, 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 because we're embedded in a social world, all of us, from the moment we're born to the day we die. Um, here's what, um, there's a fantastic paper in the... Uh, on the RSA site, which you ought to go and read, by a mate of mine, Paul Ormerod, the award-winning economist. He talks about social policy, and he says the nudge stuff is really important because it gives us a more accurate picture of individuals, but the only thing that's really important, the most important thing going forward to shape better social policy, which has better outcomes, um, is understanding the social context. He talks about the networks. That's his perspective on it, but social context is the most important thing for him. So we need to think less about the molecule and more about the wave. And there are lots of tools out there to do that, and, and here's just one, right? If you understand the characteristic properties of the plots that we see of uh, popularity, for example, or distribution of popularity, you can diagnose whether or not some, a behavior is, and this is just names, it doesn't really matter what it is, left is an independent choice and the right is a highly social one. Lots of this stuff out there, you just need to go and have a bit of a look. And it allows us to look, and here I think is the important place for us as planners to think about both at a grand scale, to understand that it's between people and not between their eyes that stuff happens. Between people is the influence. How that between space is structured is one thing. The second thing is, what opportunities are there once you get inside and you've characterized it? What opportunities are there for you to change how that space works? Because, like I say, we're social creatures, first, foremost, almost last, and we do <coughs> what other people do. Thank you. Thank you.